Well, hello, Dick. Hello, Jim. It looks as though someone doesn't approve of the advocate. We still having our meeting? We sure are, by thunder, as soon as the others get here. I'll show those outlaws I don't scare easy. I'll bust them clear out of Wyoming territory. <laughs> the sooner we get rid of Luke Graham, the sooner Rock River will be free of stage holdups, bank robberies, and murders, all of which started almost as soon as he got into office. Now, wait, Dick. Luke claims he's trying, but these bandits are just too much for him. The way they disappeared to thin air? Thin air, phantom bandits, Tommy rot. Now look, Jim, I'm not afraid to admit it. I signed Luke's petition for his appointment as territorial marshal when I should have signed yours. All right, I was wrong. There's just one place for mistakes, the ash can. And if Luke can't do better than he has been, that's where he's going to. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. He's had too many chances. Now it's up to us to demand that he do something about this deplorable condition or resign. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Now one big aye from the advocate makes it unanimous. Not quite unanimous, I'm afraid. The only way you can get me out is to kick me out. And that'll need the signature of President Harrison. What are you doing here, Luke? Eavesdropping? Don't flatter yourself, gentlemen. Nothing you have to say worries me. This letter I came to see you about, Dick. It's from your daughter, Grace. As soon as she said I'm giving up that newspaper job in Kansas City and coming out here to help you with advocate. Says you're the same notion, Jim. Well, maybe I am. I had a letter from her, too, and told her to come on. Why shouldn't she? Because it isn't safe, that's why. Especially with the advocate right in the middle of all this trouble. Well, I was hoping you could talk her out of it, Dick. I don't seem to have much influence with her anymore. You know Grace as well as I do, Luke. When her mind's made up, it's made up. I know, but I thought maybe you could get her to wait two or three weeks. Why wait? My conditions have been this way for six months. What do you think you can accomplish in two or three weeks? You never can tell, but you may be surprised. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. You are lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Clementine. In a canyon, in a cavern, excavating for a mine, was a miner, 49er, and his daughter Clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. You are lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Clementine. Light she was, and like a feather, and her shoes were number nine. Herring boxes without topses, sandals were for Clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. You are lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Clementine. All right, you can get your beauty sleep now, Terry Hewn. You sure need it. I'm through singing. As far as your singing's concerned, King, you've been through long before this. <laughs> okay, Alibi. Hey, before you hold in for the winter, would you mind cutting this thread off for me? All right. Cut her close. Hey, you cut her too close. Well, I didn't want the doggone button no how. What's going on in here? Nothing except the lost the button. But I heard a shot. What are you now alive been up to? Shh. He's asleep. Well, it's time for him to get up. Come on, get up. What are you so head up about? Oh, this letter here from Luke Graham. Luke Graham, who was he? Why, he was one of our best friends when Crash and me were taking homesteaders into Oklahoma during the land rush. Say, if he hadn't have beat Red Baxter to the draw and shot him, me and Crash wouldn't be here today. Well, that wouldn't be so bad, neither. Then maybe I could get some sleep. What's bothering him? Now Luke's territorial marshal over in Wyoming, and he's got himself into plenty of hot water. Well, how do you like this? Just because he can't hog tie and deliver a bunch of disappearing bandits, some fool editor's lambasting that he's not trying hard enough. And what's more, they're accusing him of being in cahoots with him. That makes me boil. Don't it you, Alibi? No, can't say it does. All I want to do is sleep. And that's what I aim to do. Oh. So you're going to run out on us, huh? No. If there's any running to be done, it's going to be you and Dusty. 
I'm too tuckered out. Well, I guess that's that, Crash. Looks like there's only two range busters from now on. Yes, Dusty. I guess we'll just have to saddle up aloft. Well, goodbye, alibi. Oh, say, if you get around to it, well, you might meet me and Crash over by Rock River. Don't keep any lamp burning in the window for me. Hey, Joe, climb up on top and throw off the stuff. I'll look after the passengers, if there is any. Come on, get out of there. I will not. I'm getting off at Rock River. Maybe you don't know, lady, but you're getting off right here. Does this convince you? Yes, I'm getting off right here. I knew the old convention would do the trick. Here, I'll take that as a souvenir. the express bus, Joe? Yeah. We hate to grab and run, ma'am, but you know how it is. Please don't met you. Phil. Phil, are you hurt bad? I'm afraid so, Miss Ross. Oh, there, there. I'll get you to a doctor. Look, do you think you can make it all right if I help you? I believe I can, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Suppose. I'm going to turn you over to the marshal. Well, now, if you mean Luke Graham, well, that'd be right obliging, ma'am, because we and I lost ourselves looking for him. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I suppose you're going to tell me that he sent you to round up the bandits. Well, now, as a matter of fact, he did. And here's a letter to prove it. That's going to be kind of awkward reading, ain't it, ma'am? Wouldn't you like for me to hold your gun? Thank you. Oh, that's better. Oh, heavens, I forgot. Give me back that gun, young man. Well, it wouldn't do you any good. It isn't loaded. Oh, well, in that case, you may keep it. Why, I... Oh, I never heard of such a mitigated slander. And a stubborn old mule by the name of Dick Ross has started to skin me alive in his newspaper. Yes, and that certainly is slander for anybody to lambast Luke Graham like that. Oh, it is, is it? And what about Luke Graham calling my father a stubborn old mule? Uh, your father? 
I, uh, I wonder what Trash is up to. Are you coming? We don't report this to Luke. Pretty soon he'll never catch the bandit. Get out of here in a hurry. Luke! Crash! Dusty! What oh, do you do? I'm glad I am. I can count on you, boy. Good to see you. Say, hey, Luke. Uh, Grace. What are you? Well, I thought I wrote to... You write too many letters, Mr. Graham. It would really pay you to cut down your correspondence. To say nothing of your descriptions of people. What? Oh, well, I guess you old friends would like to be alone. Well, don't let me disturb you. I've said all I have to say to Luke. Well, or, uh, Mr. Graham. But, but Grace... Are you all right? Oh, Father, of course, perfectly. We rushed over as soon as we heard about a stage holdup. What stage holdup? Just hearing about it as usual? Well, what if I am? You've no right to... I have every right, Luke Graham. Especially when a decent law-abiding citizen is fighting for his life while a territorial marshal sits around doing nothing. Or perhaps you haven't heard that Bill Davis was shot. Bill? That's right, Luke. We took him to the doctors, but he's in a bad way. Who are you, gentlemen? More passengers? No, Father. They just happened along after the robbery. They claim. They also claim to be friends of Luke, or uh, Mr. Graham. Oh, just happened along, huh? Well, what about it, Luke? Are they friends of yours? Of course they are. Crash Corrigan, Dusty King. And the reason they happened along is because I sent for them to help clean up these outlaws. Well, everybody knows that the range busters are the best peace officers in the West. Maybe you're right, Luke. But all I know is that if Bill Davis doesn't pull through, a lot of folks around here are not going to be of a mind to take your word for anything. So you and your friends had better get busy. Don't worry, we intend to. Well, Luke, what's their first move? Find out if them phantom bandits left a couple of traces this time. They've been robbing and shooting and killing till the whole country's plenty scared. And plenty more mad. And not once after a hold up or a shooting have we found a trace as to who they are or where they hang out. Hey, look, Miss Ross went off and left her release. Well, I don't want any more run-ins with Jim Dawson, and he's sure to be with her. Maybe you better take it to her, Crash. What's he got against you, Luke? Who is he? Right now, he's head of the Cattlemen's Association. But we have never had no trouble, unless, of course, you want to count his trying to get to Marshall's job, same as I was. Or maybe he's still trying to beat me out with Grace. Say, he wouldn't be trying to get you fired and get your job, would he? Don't see why. Being Marshall's a big headache. Yeah, but it might be an awful big stepping stone to a lot of easy money, if you're not too particular who you hold hands with. I suppose so. Personally, I wouldn't know just how to go about it. No, I reckon you wouldn't. Well, anyway, can you tell me how to go about it to get this valise back to Miss Ross? Sure. Father's place is right north of town, about a quarter of a mile. Look for his newspaper sign. Better hurry, Crash. We've got a lot of hard riding to do to catch up with those disappearing bandits. I think I'll stick close to town to see who rides in and what their business is all about. Well, I'll be seeing you. Hi. Hello. I thought you'd be out chasing those robbers by this time. Oh, no. My partner and I have a little system. He rides out of town and chases the robbers in. I just stay put and throw a little salt on their tail. So, <laughs> hey, uh, Miss Ross in? Yeah, I believe so. You know, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Look me up when you get back to town. You'll probably find me in the saloon. Thanks. Glad to.
may be inefficient, Father, but I can't believe he's actually encouraging crime. I tried to have faith in Luke as hard as anybody. But it, things look darn peculiar. All this starting as soon as he was sworn into office. Oh, I know how much you like Luke, and I hate like the Dickens, Who too. said I liked him? Well, maybe you like Jim Dawson better. Maybe. Before I went away, I couldn't quite make up my mind between Jim and Luke, but now... Come in. Howdy. You went off and forgot your valise. Thank you. Don't you think you'd better look inside? I wouldn't want to be accused of robbing you twice. Oh. Nice print shop you have here, Mr. Ross. Makes out all right for Rock River, though Grace here doesn't quite agree with me. Well, all I said, Father, is that the advocate would be a greater credit to Wyoming if it had more of a, well, a metropolitan appearance. Have you ever read the Kansas City Star, Mr. Corrigan? Oh, I don't think so. Then you haven't read anything. That's where Grace has been the last couple of years, writing cooking recipes mostly. Now she's back on Rock River to help me dude up the advocate. Grace, look at this. Excuse me. And that hombre I hired this morning said he knew how to set type. <laughs> oh. Hey, come here, you printer's devil. <laughs> You want me, boss? What is this? Chinese or Scandinavian? Uh, I was afraid you wouldn't like it. Like it? Why should anyone like it? I guess they wouldn't out here in Wyoming. It's too new. I sort of have to get used to it. Maybe what we need is a... A referee, maybe that gentleman over there. I don't need a referee to help me run a printing office. Uh, uh, Corrigan, look at this. Does it make sense to you? <laughs> I quite agree with you, Mr. Ross. This new style isn't exactly to my taste, but I like to have them come right out without making puzzles. Corrigan, you're right. And out here in Wyoming, I don't want any more new wrinkles from you or Kansas City either. Hereafter, I'll set my own type. And you confine your efforts to reading proof and keeping the place cleaned up. Now get out and take down that type you've set up. Yes, sir. I don't know, Father. At least headlines like this ought to attract attention. Oh, rubbish. Oh, Mr. Corrigan, uh, come in and sit down. Oh, no, thanks. I reckon I'd better get back to town. Oh, Mr. Corrigan. Yes? That's my valise, remember? Oh. Oh, oh, yes, it is. Excuse me. Goodbye. Any message for Luke? No. Well, I just thought I'd ask. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Ross. Goodbye. Sure glad you came. But how in the deuce did you get here ahead of me and Dusty? On well, an old engine trail. Once you showed me the Daniel Boone. Ah, what are you talking about? Daniel Boone was dead before you were born. Well, maybe it was Buffalo Bill then. But anyhow, I got here, and after sizing up the situation for a couple of days... How long? Day. How long? Well, maybe two hours then. Well, I decided that the way to find out something was to go to work for that gent that's been lambasting that friend of yours and Dusty's. Interesting. But what did you find out? Plenty. I got all the Ross family secrets. And I found out that most folks around here haven't made up their mind whether you're a peace officer or one of them outlaws. Well, quit fabricating. Quit what? Quit lying. Oh. There aren't a half a dozen people that know I'm in town. You'd be surprised how news gets around. Dawson? I thought so. Now, what's his feelings on the matter? He sort of leans towards that outlaw theory. Yeah, he would. Tell me. Just how sweet is he on Ross's daughter? Just what I thought when I seen you here. But you and Dusty can set your minds at rest. Dawson and Luke have been courting Grace for a long time, but Dawson's got such a head start that there ain't any of you stand a chance. Alibi, it's not me I'm thinking about. It's Luke. 
Now, wait a minute, Crash. We come here to catch Bannon's and to help save Luke's job, and I refuse to play Cupid to some gal for him. There's nothing to stop us from trying to save Bullet and maybe catch a couple of crooks, too. just ain't possible a whole mess of horse tracks leading to this shack and nary a one leading away from it. And not a horse any place around. That's what I've been trying to tell you. These outlaws leave a trail as plain as day right up to where you're set to nab. Them. But when you nab, all you get is thin air. Sometimes I think I'm going crazy, like right now. I can't see them, but I can almost hear them laughing at me. Oh, it's just your imagination, Luke. And we better go. We're more likely to find something in town as out here. I suppose you're right. Very simple, Chuck. For a man as fast on the trigger as you are. Now, all you gotta do is to egg him on and beat him to the draw. You mean let him go for his gun first? Sure. And if she ain't scared, he's too fast for you. Not for me, boss. Now you got me set straight. That's what you call justified home... Uh, uh, homicide, yeah. Self-defense. And you got plenty of witnesses to say so. I've never seen you get so fidgety about one strange gent before, boss. Well, I wasn't fidgety until I got to remembering it back about uh, three, maybe four years ago, back in Dodge City. If I wasn't moving out when he was moving in, I'd be in Leavenworth right now instead of Rock River. Here he comes now. When he gets here, neither one of you know where I am, see? I'm Ed. Yes, sir. Howdy. Have you seen a gent around here by the name of Jim Dawson? Who? Jim Dawson. You got me. You must have the name twisted. Oh, I don't think so. Well, you have. The gentleman you're talking about is known as Mr. Dawson. Well, I've heard him called Jim Dawson. If you should happen to see him, would you tell him that Crash Corgan was asking for him? Yeah. Before you go, tell these gentlemen who you want. Is it Jim or Mr. Dawson? Oh, I don't want anybody. He was asking for me. Is it Jim or is it Mr.? <laughs> How do you spell phantom, Elmer? Don't ask me to, hon. I'm as ignorant as I look. Nobody could be that ignorant. so good for Luke. 
Boy, oh boy, oh boy, give me a look. Getting worse and worse. What do you stand here for, hmm? Huh? Let's do something. Break it up. Come on, get busy. Somebody dropped a match or something. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. No harm was done. Besides, we've got more important things to talk about. Congratulate me, Dick. No. Yeah. Really? That's fine. When does the wedding take place? Well, uh, well, you'll have to ask Grace that. Just as soon as I can get ready. Get that story about Luke Graham into an inside page. My daughter's announcement takes the front page. Yes, sir, I'll do that just as quick as I get back. What's the matter with now? Where do you think you're going? I ain't too sure. All I know is, I got a little personal announcing to do. Oh, so it's you, huh? Wake me up when somebody important comes in, will you, Craig? Oh. I am in. And I got news that'll wake you up like you've never been before. I doubt it. Yeah, what? Grace Ross is going to marry Jim Dawson. What? I thought that would make you sit up and take a couple of notices. They, they can't do that behind Luke's back. Well, sure enough, doing it, what do you aim to do? We've already done it. We sent Luke away on a secret mission. Then it's up to two of you to keep her from marrying Dawson. Oh, personally, I'd be glad to take her away from Dawson. But it'd be kind of hard to hand her back to Luke after she got stuck on me. Well, now, ain't that just too pretty? She'd be stuck, all right. Oh, so I suppose you could do better. Well, I don't like to brag, but I haven't had any complaints so far. Oh, no? No. Well, how about that girl back in Colorado? Which one? Uh, the one that threw that pail of water on you. Ooh, oh, that one was. She just didn't have an ear for music, that's all. I wouldn't wonder. Every time you sing, I wished I was minus a couple of ears myself. Oh, is that right? Well, I suppose you think you could separate Grace from Dawson without even so much as singing to her. Yes, sir, I do. And why don't the both of you do it? Strikes me as how two men are better than one in any fight. What are you getting at, Alibi? Well, if you're going to play John Alden, do it right. Use every weapon you can lay your hands on. Because you can bet your sweet life, she sure enough will. Oh, I still don't get it. You two dumb cow folks, do I have to get out a set of blocks? Now listen. This is just the kind of day that a cowboy's bright and gay, that's why I'm singing my prairie serenade. But before this day is gone, and the new day comes along, I will sing to you my prairie serenade. This world's full of gladness. <laughs> Throw out all the sadness and smile while the sun shines on the trail. I'm just happy and free as any cowboy can be. That's why I'm singing my prairie serenade. Let me see your smiling face. There's no one can take your place. So listen to the song in my heart. This is just the kind of day that a cowboy's bright and gay. That's 
why I'm singing my prairie serenade. <laughs> you know, I thought there for a minute you weren't coming out. I ordinarily wouldn't have, Mr. Corrigan, but well, you sang so beautifully, it was hard for even me to resist. Oh, oh, oh. You have a very good voice. You really think so? Uh -huh. Oh, I never thought it amounted to much. It always sounded to me more like a frog a croaking. Oh. <laughs> Why, it's nothing of the sort. <laughs> uh. What's the matter, Mr. Corrigan? Something bit me. This place is full of insects that are always waiting to attack you from behind. Yes, I imagine there are. What was that? Where? Well, I thought I heard something moving over there behind that tree. Oh, no, I don't think so. Why should anyone want to be hiding behind that tree when they might get caught? I can hear you, Mr. Corrigan. You don't have to shout. Or do you? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm not sure that I do either, but I'll soon find out. Oh, oh. <laughs> just a minute, miss. There might be something there. Dangerous. It might even be a rattlesnake. Or something. <laughs> I'll scare it away. Shoo! Get away from there and quick! Shoo! That's that. Mm. Well, maybe you're afraid to look, Mr. Corrigan, but I'm not. Oh, oh. Nice day, isn't it? I hope. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, just looking. I, I think I lost something. I. If you mean your voice, Mr. Corrigan has it. Great. Is something wrong? No, Dad. Something just went wrong with Mr. Corrigan and Mr. King. Only this time I caught them at it. I don't know what you're up to, but whatever it is, you can tell Lou Graham that I'm sick of men who have to bring in others to do their job and their courting. What's wrong, Jim? What happened? The worst. Bill Davis is dead. By thunder, that does it. When a man like Bill Davis, whom we all loved and honored, is murdered, there is no time to wait for an incompetent, blundering marshal who runs off to the governor to make excuses. It's time then for red-blooded, right-thinking citizens to take other measures. That's why we've gathered here tonight, to form a vigilance committee with Jim Dawson as our leader. You all know that I'm not the kind to shirk my duty. But you've certainly picked a mighty inconvenient time. Most of you men know that I'm getting married tomorrow. And I don't... Yeah, Jim, that don't make any difference, does it, man? <laughs> well, now, wait. Sure, we can spare you a couple of days for a honeymoon. <laughs> now, look. If you fellas want me, I'll do my best. But there ain't going to be no strangers being passed off for peace officers. And running away, hiding behind the governor's skirts. Luke Graham never ran away from anything in his life. And why isn't he here? Well, why isn't he? It's just what I thought. When you can think of something, let us know. All right, boys. Our meeting's adjourned to the bar. <laughs> That invite included you, too? Have a drink. No, thanks. My partner and I are going out to see if we can't find you a couple of good answers. They must have took that crack of mine seriously. Yeah. Looks like you and Joe are going to have to go to work. Huh? What do you mean? I'll tell you later, after the meeting.
Hey, Crash. Here's some tracks that look awful fresh, and they're all leading the same way, right up to here. Maybe this time we'll find somebody inside. Another ghost story. Hold on there, Crash. Did you ever know of a ghost moving a ladder? What do you mean? When I was here the other day, it was leaning against the wall. Yeah? Maybe our phantoms have been holding a convention up here in the rafters. Hey, Crash. Yeah? We're getting hot. Now, what do you got? Some more ghost signs? Not unless a ghost can fill an express box well as ladders. You've actually found it? Yeah, here, I'll hand it down to you. Five hundred? Five hundred. How much were those robbers supposed to get when they held up the stage? About four thousand. Goes through spendthrifts, too. Yeah, and they'll be coming back here for the rest. Not if they see our horses tied outside, they won't. Say, so we better get them out of sight pronto. You take this box to the express office for identification. And I reckon I'd better stay here and hide and watch. Stay where you are. Keep your hands away from your guns. <laughs> well, it looks like we caught you with a good. Denver, get their guns. What are you driving at? We just found that box up there in the rafters. Hear that? Found it. Right from the start, we figured it's kind of fishy you being peace officers. I tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. We just... Oh, I'll save your breath, Dusty. This is why Dawson won that vigilante committee. Start marching. Are you the fellow that Mr. Dawson calls Ed? Yeah, why? He wants you to send some champagne and four bottles of the best Kentucky bourbon out to Ross's place. They're going to doctor up the punch for the wedding. Oh, you going to take it with you? No, I got another little matter or two to tend to, and he wants somebody else to fetch it. He'll get it. Hey, fellas, Roberts, me and the pure Duro, those two phony peace officers, King and Corrigan. Yeah, we caught them red-handed with the express box. The boys are fetching them in now. Looks like Luke was with them all the time, doesn't it? Kinda, but I don't see no way to prove it. Then how are we gonna hold those two in jail when Luke gets back? I guess we can, but that's one of the chances we gotta take. Oh, no, we don't. Not any more than we would a rattlesnake. That's what I say, Joe. Now, which way are they bringing them in? From the old shack down by Dry Creek. Hold on. Wait a minute. You fellas ain't figuring on anything foolish. That's just what we ain't figuring on. Such as trying to hold those two cutthroats in Luke Graham's jail. You know what we agreed? Uh, no lynching and such. I don't know what you gentlemen agreed on. I don't know how you figure it in Wyoming, but where I come from, a fellow that robs and murders under cover of the law don't deserve much consideration. You're right. You bet he is. Listen to me. Well, I swore we don't take no back talk from any of these white-livered peace officers. So just quiet down, partner. Anybody else want to raise any objection? No, not me. Right. All right, then. We'll lock this hombre up in jail where he can do no harm, get some rope, and go to work. <laughs> Come along. Swoop out on them sudden like. If anybody shows fight, don't shoot. Just clunk them like this. You sure know your business, partner. Well, I don't like to brag. It was me that made Hangtown famous. Get the shooting iron, partner. And don't any of you fellas make a false move while he's about it. We mean business.
Here, let me help you with them fire charges. Now, you fellas start riding. And don't get nothing too curious later. Hit the trail back to town. Now, the next thing to do is find a tree that needs two thick centipedes of this for decoration. All right, gentlemen, fetch along the prisoners. Made to order. Yep. About the same setup we used when we swung Cherokee Ike. You fellas better climb down, start untangling this rope. You find a couple of rocks, tie it in here, and you throw it over, and the rope will follow through. And while you're about, you better start seeing how high you can reach. Say, hey, what is this? Some kind of a joke? No. You ought to know him better than to try to outsmart two of the range busters when you didn't know where the third one is at. Well, what's the matter with you two Mavericks? Do you have to do your riding for you, too? Thanks, Alpine. We'll be seeing you. We hope. You can't get away with this. We'll string you up along with them. Some of you hombres may be high strung, but to me, you buzzards would look better if you're strung high. Now line up in a nice straight line there. Now, right face. Get ready. March. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left, right, left. Hey, young truck, you're out on a step there. Now keep marching and don't look back. Keep marching. Right, left, right, left. Hey, man, come on. Everything, Alibi. Somebody had to. Well, they give us the slip. I hope Ed didn't forget that champagne and all this excitement. What champagne? It'd be embarrassing not to have some punch to drink and toast to the bride with. We're not going to be tired at high noon. Sign of the judge yet? No, I don't know what's causing the delay. He knew that he was supposed to be here at 12 sharp to perform the wedding ceremony. Maybe I'd better ride down the road a piece and hurry him up. I know somebody ought to. But you stay here with Grace and the guests. I'll hurry him up. Plenty. This is an outrage. You paid for this, all three of you. That's the way you feel now, Judge. But someday you'll thank us for keeping you from performing this here wedding ceremony which you'd regret to the very last day of your life. Uh, we're gonna have to work fast. Yep, it ain't gonna be healthy if we don't catch up with Dawson before he catches up with us. You know, I have a notion the place to start again is that old shack. There's more there than we've found. Well, suppose you two go there, and I'll go to town and see what's boiling. What's the matter, Craig? You're disappointed you didn't get lynched? <laughs> don't worry about me, Alibi. I can take care of myself. Yeah, I noticed that. You and Dusty both. <laughs> Fine girl. She is a nice girl. And lovely cigars, if I may. Oh, the happy bride. Stop it, stop it. What kind of practical jokes do you fellas think you're playing on me? Well, boss, we, uh, Where's the judge? But what judge? You know what judge. The only judge we got. The judge is supposed to marry us. Where are you fellas hiding? Honest, boss, we... Uh, you mean he's lost? Now cut out the monkey business. I'm getting good and sore. Well, the judge is a little absent-minded. Maybe he ain't left home yet. I just left his home. He left there over an hour ago. Oh. 
They got away from us. Yeah, who got away? Corgan and King. Well, how'd that happen? Away. That planter's devil turned guns on us and rode away with them. You mean they got clean away? Yes, sir. We couldn't help ourselves. They caught us off guard. Yeah, that's the way we'll all be caught. Why, none of us is safe with those birds loose. Oh, Chuck, take a couple of the boys. Right up to the shack pronto. Clean the stuff out of there. We can't let them find us with our backs turned. All right, boss. Come on, Joe. Check. I'll, I'll be out and check up as soon as I can get into some fit riding clothes. Yeah, but, boss, what about your wedding? It'll have to wait. Have one of the boys tell the bride that I'm still out looking for the judge. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Looks like company came ahead of us. The horses look somehow familiar. Just what I was a thinking. We better take it careful, like. Sneak a look. Things ain't happening very fast. But I got a hunch something's going to be pretty soon. The gents that own them horses got to be someplace close. If they got a way of disappearing into thin air, I want to see how it's done. It's getting sort of spooky and chilly in here all of a sudden. Maybe you're sitting in a draft. Would you like for me to close the door? Either of you move the muscle, you'll feel a draft clean through you. Come on up, Joe. Go to work. Looks like all we've got time for anymore is take guns away from these gents. Now get on your feet and down that hole. against the wall and let Jim decide when he gets here. Is she married yet? Fine duration, no. Judge hasn't shown up. Thank heavens. What do you mean, thank heavens? Are you at the bottom of this? No, but Providence must be. Look, Dick, do you recognize the gent in that picture? What a fool question. Anybody'd know that was Jim. Yeah, that's what he called himself now, Jim Dawson. But when that was taken, his name was Phil Sanford. Huh? Here's his criminal record. It's a mile long. That's where I've been, Dick, in Dodge City, digging up that information. What?
you, hombres. The picnic's over. I'll take that, mister. All right, come along with me. All right, come on up here. You get gone. I got it, Dusty. I got it, I got it. for this gang. Hey, what? Who do you mean? These phantom bandits. That's the reason Luke never caught up with them. Most of the time when they had to go on, he thought they were coming. See? This explains everything. He was following them backwards. Well, folks, <laughs> now, this is where we'll have to leave you. So soon? Just to ride along with us, just a little further. Oh, we'll be coming back again. As long as you could use the three of us for best men, maybe you could use three godfathers, too. <laughs> <laughs> What's all those little grams going to be? Marshals or newspaper editors? <laughs> Neither one. They're going to be range busters, if you'll have them. And just to make sure you'll be around, here's a little reminder for you. What is it, Alibi? Nothing left than that important clue I discovered. Horseshoe turned backwards. <laughs> we want you fellas to keep it. And remember, even though you're going away, you're always headed back toward Rock River. Well, so long, folks. Good luck oh, to you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Well, we see.